We are shocked that enemies of Islam are not just. We are shocked that enemies of Islam are not showing us sympathy. We are saying, look, look, every day we're claiming, we're protesting. Look, the enemies of Deen are not just. Look, the enemies of Deen are hypocrites. Look, the enemies of Deen are not helping the civilians. Look, they are silent. Look, they are this. What do you expect from your enemy? Why is it that you are expecting your enemy to look after your Deen? It's exactly a funny example. Imagine someone in the boxing ring. He enters the boxing ring against an opponent. He's fighting with him and then he gets punched. So instead of fighting back, he goes to the audience and says, Look, he just punched me. That's unfair. Why is he punching me for? Why is he violent? Habibi, he is your enemy. He is trying to destroy your deen. Enemies of Islam are not after your money. They're not after your infrastructure. They're after your deen. They come in different forms. They wear different suits. They talk different languages, but they want Islam. They know that the biggest enemy they have in life is this deen. So don't be shocked. You should not be amazed when you find injustice in the world. You should not be amazed when enemies of Islam don't look after you. It is shocking that we want them to look after us. It is shocking that we are expecting them to be just and fair. This itself is ridiculous. It's a ridiculous concept that you want the enemies of Islam to look after you and serve your deen and be just and fair. This will never happen. So we have to be aware the responsibility of establishing Islam that Sheikh Abu Adnan mentioned before is not their responsibility. It's my responsibility. Allah will ask me on judgment day, what did I do for this deen? I have to first be aware that this is my responsibility. Nowadays, enemies of Islam have dwelt on the Ummah for centuries and have convinced us. First, they convince you to leave Deen. This is their main and best target. If you leave Islam and leave the fold of Islam, this is ultimate success for them. If they can't make you leave your Deen, then at least they want you to worship Allah on your own. Worship Allah, but keep this religion with you. If you want to pray five times, salat, I'll build you a mosque. What do you want? A mosque? You want an organization? You want an association? Beautiful. Takram ayana ki. Mosques, I will aid you. I will build a mosque for you. But so long as you leave this deen between the walls of the masjid. If you want to worship Allah, if you want to grow your beard, put niqab and do it. But please, don't intimidate us. Leave us to our lifestyle. This is why my brothers and sisters, we have to understand that if they fail to make you leave Islam, at least they want you to leave an Islam. That's not the Islam of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All prophets of Allah came with this mission to establish deen on earth. Like we heard in the ayah, and aqimu deen, establish deen. This is my role. My role is to establish deen in the world. If you go outside anywhere, especially if you know on media or something and you say ah oh, i'm out there to spread islam straight away arrows get pointed fingers get pointed at you so are you saying you're out there to islamize the world ah uh, look look he's an extremist he wants to islamize the world does any muslim in the ummah of muhammad sallam, have doubt in this of course we're out there to islamize the world there is no hiding the pillars of our deen and this should not be this should not be something that's only for Islam. Even uh, even other religions, any set of belief, if I'm convinced salvation is in this religion, happiness in this dunya and in the hereafter is in this religion, how can I keep it away from people? How can I hide it in my own house? It's only human if I'm convinced that this is the right path, this is salvation, this is happiness, this is success, that I pass it on to humanity. But nowadays, no, they've made us shy. Worship Allah, but in your house. Work in da'wah, but within your community. Don't, don't, don't disturb us. Don't disturb our lifestyle. No, I am out there and I'm out there to save humanity from the darkness they are in. The Prophet of Allah taught the Sahaba this. He made them all understand that they are responsible for deen in earth. 
When the Bedouin came and entered the Masjid of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and urinated in the mosque, and the Sahaba are about to hurt him and hit, hit him, the Prophet of Allah stopped him and he taught the man, and then he turned to his companions, وَقَالَ إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُمْ مُيَسِّرِينَ وَلَمْ تُبْعَثُوا مُعَسِّرِينَ Allah sent you. Allah didn't say to them, I'm the Prophet and you just follow and worship Allah. No, you were sent. Allah sent you to make things easy for people. Don't expect sympathy from your enemies. Don't expect it, it's ridiculous. Only expect help and nusr from Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says clearly in his book, وَكَانَ حَقًّا عَلَيْنَا نَصْرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah promised victory to the believers. So when you see no victory, what does that say? Allah is betraying his promise. Hasha wa kalla. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حَدِيثًا Who is more honest in his speech than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's us not fulfilling the conditions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Surah An-Nur, وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّاعِ Allah promises those who have belief and they have act accordingly. إِمَانُ وَعَمَلْ صَالِحُ وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسَّخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ Allah will make them rulers. Quran, promise of Allah. In the end of the ayah, يَعْبُدُونَنِي لَا يُشْرِكُونَ بِي شَيْئًا They worship me, they don't associate anyone with me. We're missing action, we're missing, we're missing a'mal, we're missing qualities. Everyone talks about manners, everyone talks about zuhd in dunya, everyone talks about akhlaq of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, everyone's thinking about salah in the masjid, and Quran, and tahajjud, and dhikr of Allah. But we're not seeing it live in our life. We want, if, if you're really concerned, and you really want to move, then you start with yourself. Your actions are much, much stronger than words. Wallahi, wallahi, the enemies of Islam, when they see a lecture like this, this burns them a million times more than a, you know, a, a comment or, or an anger or this. Or, it burns them more because they know youth will leave and become in their context, you know, sort of brainwashed. He's brainwashed. He's, a, he's an extremist now. Why? He wants to grow his beard and go to the masjid. She wants to put niqab on. She's an extremist. So my brothers, please, two things, awareness and action. Action means myself and da'wah, working hard to establish deen on earth without shyness. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who practice what we hear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and